The Chicago Bulls just continue to not know how to close out games, and this time losing to the Brooklyn Nets after having the lead at halftime despite some early struggles from the Chicago Bulls. And ultimately, this game just came down to the Bulls not being able to match the intensity and three-point shooting of the Brooklyn Nets. But we're going to talk about it, break it all down, have some fun right after this. You went into Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host, Sarah Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform that we happen to be on. With that being said, Hey, uh, yeah, the Bulls are who we continue to know who they are. Uh, losing 125 to 108 to the Brooklyn Nets on the road uh, were the Chicago Bulls in this game. And really, when you look at this game, it comes down to one particular stat that you can just look at as, as one of the biggest reasons, not the biggest reasons, but one of the biggest reasons. The Chicago Bulls went 9 of 30 from three-point line for 30%. The Brooklyn Nets made 25 three-pointers in this game. They went 25 of 34 in this game, and that was really what made the difference in this game. When you look at the first half, the Brooklyn Nets only made seven three-pointers in the first half of this game. They actually went uh, seven of 20 for 35%, which is, is good defense by the Chicago Bulls, missed some, some, some good shots. But then when you look at the flip side of that, in the second half of this game, the Brooklyn Nets went 18 of 24 from three-point range for 75% from the three-point line. The Bulls just don't have the shooting to match that. That's just the way that it boils down. When the Bulls give up three-point shots in the manner in which they do, they don't have the shooting on our side to even hope to match that type of value. We just don't have it. So a team that's going to make 25 out of 44 three-pointers on, on the night, they shot the ball 56% for the night, from the night. The Bulls just don't have the firepower to match that. They don't. When you look at areas of the game, the Bulls won a lot of the, the gritty stats in this game. They won the rebounding battle 44 to 3. The points off turnover battle, they lost that badly, 6 16 to 5. That's just that's just terrible. That's ugly right there. Second chance points, 19 to 14 in favor of the Brooklyn Nets. Fast break points, we won that 15 to 12. Bitch points, we won that 24 to 22. But it just it comes down to how you perform. And points off turnovers, the Bulls lost that as well. 16 points off turnovers. Um, so it just, I, I, it's, it's just, this is the type of game. This They played perfectly into the Chicago Bulls' weaknesses. They just did. They completely exploited every one of the Chicago Bulls' weaknesses when it comes to defending that three-point line. Mikael Bridges, who just absolutely went off 7 of 11 from three-point range, did Mikael Bridges do, go in this game? And like I said, the Bulls just, we don't have the, the type of firepower to match that. We just don't have it. And so when you get a team that's going to shoot that that way, it's unfortunate, man. When you look at the numbers, uh, DeMar DeRozan with a 30-point performance today, going 11 of 20 from the field. Uh, Nikola Vucevic, 5 of 10 for 13 points. Kobe White, 18 points. He goes 6 of 16, 9 assists, 2 rebounds from Kobe. Only 6 points from Alice Caruso, 16 from Io DeSumo. And, uh, yeah, this uh, I said coming into this game, I wanted to see Vooch and Andre Drummond both have double-doubles. Uh, Drum didn't get there as far as the points. Six points, but uh, 11 re rebounds from Andre Drummond. It just, hey. And the Javante Green effect completely wore off in the second half of this game, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, they ended up, you know, in the in, the, in totality, they had a plus two uh, advantage as far as plus minus with Javante on the court. A net rating of only 6.4. Defensive rating of 106. It was like 55 in the first half of this game. Um, the Bulls just didn't have enough, man. That's just this is what it comes down to. The Bulls just did not have enough. We don't have enough shooting. It's simple math. This was a game where the math, the simple math, just was not in favor of the Chicago Bulls. It just wasn't. So uh, it is what it is when it comes down to it, man. I hate to just give it just that plain of a of an evaluation, but really that's just what it comes down to. It just is what it is. The Bulls didn't have enough. And this is the, this is why I said it like in today's daily episode. If Trey Young's back for the Atlanta Hawks uh, in the play-in, the Bulls are going to lose that game too because of the way that Trey Young could go off from three-point range. Now we do have Io DeSumo, which could nullify that. But hey, uh, this is a do not care factor by the Bulls. No, I don't. I don't think that they didn't care. They just they did not have the ability to stop 
or match that three-point shooting. I just want to know who will be requesting a trade this offseason. I don't know if any of them are, to be honest with you. DeMar DeRozan, just leave next year, bro. Save yourself the, the headache and save yourself the tireless effort that you're putting into the team that doesn't care about winning. I think they care. I just don't. They just can't. The starting lineup was trash. I don't get uh, the rotations ever. Also, what offense are we running? It's so stagnant. I wish Zoe came back uh, just for his mind. It's not going to help this team. Not, it's not going to help everybody else move without the ball. Um, as far as the starting lineup, I mean, starting lineup has been the starting line. We've won some really good games with that starting lineup. That lineup is what it is. Now, the rotations, that's always going to be Billy. Billy sucks when it comes to rotations. Um, nothing makes me want to punch someone in the face more than our players always laughing and joking after embarrassing losses. Yeah, that does that doesn't sit right, right? I wasn't fooled by the Pacers win or the Javante Green effect because, like I mentioned, they always do this going back to last season. I'm just ready for a new culture change that we're never going to get. Well, why? Well, if you think we're never going to get it, <laughs> what are you waiting for? The team lacks urgency, and so does uh, the damn front office and coaching staff. Listen, the co the front office for sure, like. You just, you got to get your life together when it comes to that front office and understand that this team is not going to get to even where you want to get to. It's just not going to happen with the makeup of this roster and under this coach. Like the combination of those two things, though, that Venn diagram that overlays there, it's just not going to lead to what they want it to lead to. Disgusting. Absolutely, Seaway. Math problems. Math is a big problem for that. Uh, it seems like Acme didn't have any other answers except the word competitive. This to me just sounds like a man who doesn't know what he's doing and doesn't want to admit it. No, I, and that's the thing. No, Acme knows what he's doing. The problem with Acme isn't that he doesn't know what he's doing, is that, that he's really committed to these players. I think the moment that Acme makes the decision, once we see Acme make that decision to say, all right, this ain't it, let's go ahead, let's change things up, I think you're going to see them make some really smart moves um, just like they did when they wanted to build this team, making the move for Vooch, going out and getting DeMar, Lonzo, Alex Cruz. So in the offseason where we had no cap space, um, they saw a vision for it and they looked at how those pieces were going to fit together and they built something that was working technically. Um, but no, I think they know what they're doing. They just the problem with Acme as a front office isn't that they don't know what they're doing. It's that that what they're committed to doing right now is not going to lead us anywhere meaningful. They gotta, they gotta commit to changing this. They gotta commit to building something different. Not going full rebuild because that's not coming either. But they have to commit to something different. And until they do that, it's gonna continue to be this, this, this rigmarole, right? It's gonna keep you being the same thing. Uninspiring, low energy bullshit. Billy needs to make goddamn adjustments. He did. Billy made an adjustment in this game at halftime. He changed from bubblicious to spearmint Wrigley's. That was the adjustment that Billy Donovan made in this game. Uh, ever since we went away from the double bigs, we struggled. We had huge side adventures today, and they couldn't have been uh, in serious foul trouble. Well, here's the thing, Brian. The double big lineup never worked. Never worked. I don't know where you say that We ever since we went from it, that we had a overall, we only had one game where we had a positive net rating or a positive plus minus with Nikola Vucevic and Andre Drummond on the court, and that was the game against Minnesota. The double big lineup has not worked the way that people try to act like it worked. It just didn't. All we did there is get some more rebounds, or a lot more rebounds, and we got some more possessions, but we still couldn't convert shit on the offensive side of the ball. So, it, no, it did not work. The double big lineup was a big fail, and that's why you don't see us going to it much. Pathetic, just pathetic. This should have been a winnable game, but the Bulls couldn't pull it off. Nets shot like the prime Warriors uh, tonight, but the Bulls couldn't close out on shooters. Our three, I mean, this is this now that is something that's consistent for the Bulls. We cannot guard the three point line to save our lives. We can't. So, you know, it is what it is, man. Uh, Bulls need to know that you're fighting to keep your spot or move to the eight C, but what they don't uh, comprehend is that Brooklyn is fighting for a playing spot. They're uh, letting teams out hustle them. Listen, it, it, it's not about, I don't want my team sitting there saying, oh, well, we're competing for the ninth spot. You go out there and compete. This is a game, right? When you start worrying about seeding as players, you're failing. You need to go out there and compete. I don't want you to compete just because you're there for, fighting for a ninth seed to hold on to ninth seed. Go out there and compete because it's your fucking job. That's what you need to do. This is what you get paid to do. You get paid to do that. Like, like it just is what it is, man. This team, it just, mm, mm. I don't care anymore. I hope the Celtics sweep the shitty Bulls team in the playoffs. Well, that we we play this way, we're not even making it to the playoffs. You ain't even got to worry about us getting swept. 
Typical Bulls. I'm glad I stopped watching and wa- and watch the show with the family. Hey, family time is more important than seeing this team struggle, brother. It's like every team in the NBA is a three-point team, and the Bulls front office still thinks back to the basket bigs uh, are the wave. I mean, you can make that work, right? But you got to have, you have to have three-point shooting around that. Three-point shooting, regardless of how you want to play. If you want to play some back-to-the-basket bigs, cool. It is what it is. Have shooters around them, right? Everything that comes to the modern NBA is you need some shooting. You need consistent shooting threats. We don't have it. We have awful IQ, top to bottom, veterans, rookies. It don't matter. This isn't a team that can win two playing games. I just want this season to end. Fire AK, give Pose the keys to the Bulls. That's funny. I will be surprised if the Bulls made it to the play-in. They suck tonight. and keep, Oh, well, they're making it to the play-in. You ain't got to worry about it. Now, making it out the play-in, that's, that's, that's what's in question. But it would be the Bulls. Let me not say it for sure. But the Bulls would have to completely... They have now eight games left. They probably have to lose six out of those last eight to make it, to not make the playing tournament. I knew there was something about AK I didn't like when he made a promise in 2022 season that he would be more aggressive after only signing uh, Drummond and only Goran Dragic and got cocky after the first win. Now, it wasn't even after that, right? It was the it was the, the season before this off. Well, between the end of last season and this past offseason where he was like, yeah, uh, the fans are going to be really surprised by what we do in the offseason. And you went and got Tory Craig and Javon Carter. Like that, like you, that's that was the surprise. You traded for uh, into the draft to draft Julian Phillips as well. Like, don't get me wrong, solid moves, right? Getting Tory Craig for what you got him for, solid, right? For what he brings, how he understands his role. Getting Julian Phillips in the second round, that is a solid move because he has a lot of upside. But that's not any type of move where you're looking and saying, oh my God. A.K. Cook, he acted like he was about to have a, a Ryan Poles offseason. We definitely lost the numbers game, uh, but that was half the battle. Bulls uh, just love effing around, so they'll continue to find out the hard way. Hey, listen, I don't disagree. Who else thinks Billy Donovan was asking Kevin Ollie after the game, how do you do it as a coach? I need to learn. That's 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 embarrassing. Uh, we just need to wrap things, uh, wrap this thing up at this point. I'm done with it. No sense of urgency, no drive, no passion. Weak. At Brian and Danny, I don't blame Billy. I blame AK. We keep drafting Link and not a sharpshooter. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head what sharpshooters are out there, man. But yeah, it's crazy. Little Page, I'm sorry to say, but, uh, but. It's the truth. With the way Acme are so stubborn, the Bulls have to lose out. It's the only way that we may see a reason for one is not to resign DeMar DeRozan plus run it back. See, that the thing that that's, that's with Acme, and I understand you're thinking in that, right? I'm not saying you're wrong for the way that you view it. I'm just saying Acme does not view the world. He does not see the same thing that everybody else sees. I could very well see AK looking at this and saying, yeah, we lost down the stretch, but we lost down the stretch because we didn't have Zach Levine, we didn't have Patrick Williams. We beat some really good teams this season. I think that we had a I think we overachieved the fact that the record that we had, considering our four and fifteen uh start to the season, we're gonna run it back. We think these guys, if they can stay healthy this season, we, we're gonna give them another chance. We're gonna stay competitive. I can absolutely see them him saying that at the end of this season. And it just I I I don't know, man. I don't know. Let's just pray and hope that the Hawks lose to the Bucks tomorrow. Listen, I don't. I, at this point, I don't. I don't care. Like in, in the sense that I care about my team. I'm gonna cover the team. I want to see my team win as many games as possible. Make no mistake about it. When I say I don't care, this is what I mean. I don't care about the record that the Bulls finish with anymore. There's nothing that can change what the Bulls do this offseason. I don't give a shit. If the Bulls make it out the play-in and beat the Boston Celtics in the first round, I don't care. None of that change. Oh, you got lucky, my nigga. You got lucky. Everything that you have right now, you need to eliminate luck and build some skill. I don't care what the Bulls do. Anything short of the Bulls somehow magically pull a leprechaun out of Billy Donovan's ass and win a championship, anything short of that, it does not change what needs to happen this offseason. Does this sound like a part of what I said at the end of last offseason? Nothing changed the work that needs to be done this offseason. You have to revamp parts of this roster. I'm not saying you got to go full rebuild. Again, I know that's not happening. I need everybody else to recognize that's not happening either. But what I do need to happen is you to add some shooting to this team. What I do need to happen is for you to either commit 
to getting vets in here to continue to try to win, or you need to go young and let the chips fall where they at, where they at, my dude. That's what I need to happen this offseason. Get your life together. Figure out a path, right? That's what needs to happen. I hope that this team get their ass whooped by the Hawks in the playing tournament. The front office deserves that. Listen, I get what you're saying on that. I don't even know if that changes anything. The offense for me isn't as much of an issue as the defense. Vooch is so slow laterally that we have to push up against the ball handlers, which opens the corners for wide open threes. Um, well, it's communication. But, no, the offense is absolutely a problem. Because guess what? The Bulls have been a top 10 defense for the majority of the team time that this team's been together, and it ain't help shit. The offense is the problem. It's how we get our offense, right? We can score, but how you get your offense is important. And unfortunately, the Bulls make it tough on themselves. We don't have three-point shooting. We don't run, we don't play with a modern pace. We don't take we don't hit enough enough threes. We don't shoot them at an efficient level, even though we don't take a lot. That's really that no, our offense is in a very bad place. Very bad place. Getting ready to watch a Bulls game is like getting ready to go to the DMV on a Saturday afternoon. Nothing but sadness and expectation of people with the wrong attitude. Listen, I've never had a bad experience at the DMV. I haven't. I know it's like a thing. I've never had a bad experience. Uh, Bulls staff emailing uh, season ticket holders about securing postseason seats. What postseason seats, bitch? <laughs> that, listen, that, I'm sorry, I may have to make the title. That may be the title of tomorrow's video. What postseason, bitch? Like, I'm sorry. That may be the title. What postseason, bitch? Because, like, with a picture of, oh, I got uh, the thumbnails is coming together in my, Seaway's world just tight. I don't even know what I'm talking about tomorrow, but I know that that's going to be the title. What postseason, bitch? Because, uh, yeah, that, and with, you got to look AK directly in his face. What postseason? What postseason? Ain't no postseason, my, my dude. Ain't no postseason. Postseason ain't coming. Would you be more excited to see us win the play-in for a likely first-round exit or if we manage to get a top five or six draft pick? At this point, the draft pick. Antoine says the Bulls didn't want to be there tonight. Hey, bro, I can't even I, – I, I can't dispute anything you're saying right now. Wynton Mahorn says coaching continues to be the Bulls' biggest problem. Billy Donovan has shown us, no, it's not the biggest problem. It's a big problem. It's not the biggest problem. Personnel is a big problem. If this team had some shot blocking and some three-point shooting, we'd win a lot more games, even with Billy Donovan as the coach. When we know you got – like, Wynton, Wynton at this point, you could be like, hey, Kobe, Kobe White shot 0 of 33. Yeah, and if Billy Donovan would have talked talk to him more, Kobe would like, everything ain't Billy Donovan, bro. Everything ain't Billy Donovan. I know. Like, just go run the fade on Billy Donovan, Winton. At this point, you just got to run the fade on him, bro. Sub Hayes, you're right. Upgrades to the roster need to happen. But I guess my constant concern is that from the top down, owners to the GM and players, nobody wants to make the tough decisions. Need. I mean, I don't disagree with you. You got to make some tough decisions. So, <laughs> lose six out of eight games, Bulls. Hold my beer. I mean, in 2021-22, we won six games out of the last 32. So anything's possible, bro. Anything is possible. Sydney, uh, let's just pray and hope that the uh, Hawks lose to the Bucks tomorrow. Listen, I don't care. I I hope they win. I hope they win. I hope I hope they win. I hope the Hawks win every game left for the remainder of the season. I really do. Why didn't Javon Carter, uh, Javon Carter, we got ball-headed Leroy, did, that's crazy. Uh, the only surprise that was worth it this offseason from AK is getting Phillips, Craig, and Batim. Batim, yes, got to give credit for Batim as well. They were good pickups. Carter can go play for the Shanghai Sharks. The Wan Dong Tigers, that's who he needs to play for. That's crazy. L in the building. I haven't seen L around here in a minute. It's his long, deep side. Tell me when it's over. Bro, ah, man. Yeah. If the Bulls don't make a change, the seed for next year will stand for canceled. That's deep. Sad. I agree with you, Cannon. I agree with you, bro. Uh, what if P. Will didn't get injured? Do you think the Bulls would have a better record? I mean, somewhat, but like P. Will is kind of up and up and down, man. Uh, that's it, Hayes. I just don't care. I'm sorry people disagree with me. I said this at the deadline. People got angry with me. We need a reset. Go young, in my opinion. Fans need to put pressure on. Act. It's, there's no pressure. I'm telling you, like, stop. It's not. I get it that you feel like this incense. 
uh, ability to do something. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. These motherfuckers don't give a shit. And not because you're wrong that we don't need to put pressure. They don't care. Acme is the type of person who will literally look you in your face and be like, yeah, yeah, that's wine. You'd be like, but wait a second, it's yellow. It smells like piss. It's wine. Don't even worry about it. Acme, we know that we just tested it. It came back as piss. No, it's wine, bro. Trust me. Just just trust me. That's, that's Acme. It don't matter what pressure you put on them, bro. David Healy in the building says, bro, I stayed up to 3 a.m. to watch this shit. Love from Ireland, though. Hey, bro, uh, love you, bro. But uh, yeah, man, it's, 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 this is crazy, man. Crazy, bro. Told you, bro, you had to be. No, that's, you're just an idiot. Because again, the, what I laid out was what's happened, right? The Bulls have beat those teams. They can. You got to stop living in the moment, man. Like that's the that's the most stupid mindset to have is well they like the whole stu the stupidest mindset you could have as a fan. Well, the Atlanta Hawks beat the Brooklyn. They they beat Boston twice. The Bulls couldn't beat Boston twice, so that means that the Hawks they Bulls can't ap they absolutely can't beat the Hawks. No, the Bulls can beat the Hawks. The biggest question is will they? It's not a question of if they can. If the Bulls need to can take advantage of the things that they can that they need to take advantage of. That's the biggest question. Uh, Billy Donovan, in my opinion, from what I've seen from the roster, isn't a massive problem. When I've seen Griffin and Joe Missoula lead the Bucks and Celtics to the top two seeds in the East, that tells you everything. Well, no, that no, it doesn't tell you everything. Those teams are way better teams, right? And they're better coaches as well. Like, look at what Udoka is, for example, doing right now with the, the Houston Rockets. So coaching is a problem because one thing that we've seen with Billy Donovan is he doesn't even use players to the best of their ability. So, yeah, the roster's a problem as well. And roster can help a lot. But Billy is part of the problem. He's just not the biggest problem, right? There's a lot of things right now that are all equal, man. They're all equal. Um, I love this team and will to the day I die. But considering how this team plays, I wish they could miss the playing altogether. They're not going to do shit. I'd rather not see them play uh, than lose. I mean, I'd rather see my team play, but I get what you're saying, man. Um, I'm just glad I started Cam Thomas in fantasy today. Bulls D going to win me a title. Hey, hey, play it the best way you can, bro. Um, the Chicago Bulls did not play defense and get rebounds. I'm not uh, shooting the ball correctly. What do you think? Well, they got rebounds. They just got, I think they only lost the rebounding battle about what, four? Something like that. They won the rebounding battle. They don't get the key rebounds, right? So that that's the thing as well in that. Nah, Joe Mazzula isn't a good coach. He's a terrible at getting y'all. No, that's just wrong. I'm sorry. That's that's just that's not even remotely correct. Joe Mazzula is a good a good basketball coach, bro, and he makes good adjustments. Is he a perfect coach? No, but Joe Mazzula is a good basketball coach. He's not. He's way head and shoulders above Billy Donovan. The coaching is a, is a problem. Yes, the coaching is absolutely a problem. It's just not the only problem, and it's not the biggest problem. Even though they won't do it, I would like to see them explore a trade with Vooch this offseason. Hey, listen, they may do it, but nobody's going to take them. Nobody's going to take Nikola. If you trade Nikola Vucevic right now, you'll have to give up a first-round pick to get a team to take on that contract. So it's it's just not going to happen, bro. Like, Vooch is here. For the better or worse, Vooch is here, bro. All we can do is hope that we can draft a center maybe that can that's ready to step into that starting role sooner rather than later. Uh, also, this team has such an issue passing Vooch the ball in the paint. Yeah, we can't make an entry pass to save our life. Uh, Hayes is the biggest problem. Uh, Hayes, Acme is the biggest problem. He has a Reinsdorf mindset. He's okay doing enough. As long as the Bulls are okay, uh, then Acme's happy. I, I don't think, I, that's the thing. I don't think Acme's happy with what this team is at right now. I think Acme really hopes that this he can make it work with this core still. And once he realizes he can't, I think we're going to see a very different. Very different uh, mindset from Acme. I'll do it. I don't know what you're doing. I just wish Acme was committed. It would be a decision between uh, coach and players. See how this team looks with a different coach or see how the coach looks with different players. That's it. I mean, listen, it's not that simple, though, right? Because look at it this way. When the Bulls were up to, at the point, let's go. let's even go back to when they signed Zach Levine. You're not going to let a, a player enter in their prime walk for nothing because you're not able to replace him so you had to sign re-sign zach levine this is, is what it is he was going to get the max regardless no matter where he went but then the bulls didn't recognize 
how to read that market. That deal that the New York Knicks offered reportedly would have been a great deal now that we're looking back at it for Zach Levine, right? Then the Lonzo contract. We have this thing of, oh, move off. It's not that easy, right? Like the, the place that the Bulls are in right now, it's of their own doing. Make no mistake about it. I want to be clear here. Where the Bulls are are of the front office's own doing. Had the front office. I'm just going to, let me just lay this out for you guys. They traded for Nikola Vucevic. Cool. It is what it is there. Let's say you still sign Lonzo Ball that offseason. He's young. He fits next to Zach Levine. But then if you didn't make the move for DeMar DeRozan, maybe you go ahead and sign Alice Caruso, but you have way more flexibility coming up now, right? Like the series of moves that they did, it's just, it's bad, man. It's bad. Uh, who's the bigger issue and more immediate focus we need to move on from this summer? DeMar, Zach, or Vooch? Um, I mean, DeMar, you cut you. I don't, it is what it is. Like, he's a free agent. You can let him walk if that's the case. Um, the Zach thing, it, it depends on how much the front office's ways, how much that they feel that they can, that they just don't want to risk Zach Levine coming back, uh, at the start of next season. They don't even want to deal with that. Um, Vooch, Vooch ain't going nowhere. I just laid that out. Who's the better coach, Ty Lue or Spo? Oh, Spo for sure. Spo for sure. Uh, but, Look at what Acme has done in the last three years. Acme was serious about being competitive. He would have made some moves, uh, not just getting Tory Craig. Oh, listen, it's not just as simple as make some moves. Go back and look at the free agent market and where, where are the players that would have helped the Bulls win? They all went to playoff contending teams. You have to have a partner to make a move, right? And I do believe, and that, that's just in, in reviewing everything, had the Bulls made a move that a lot of Bulls fans call, it would have been a move where you had to give up more picks. And that's the thing where the front office, again, it's somewhere that they put themselves in. But because you gave up so many picks to bring in Vooch, to bring in DeMar, you, the Bulls are at a place where, well, we don't want to move picks to move off some of these guys because we need them. We need to start replenishing the young talent. And so that's the place that you put yourself. Yeah, they could have made moves, but I would say this, the moves that they could have made aren't worth giving up more draft picks than what we've already gave up right now. This isn't. Acme is the kid who gets so invested in an idea that he starts to tell people like it already happened, even though we all see it as and that's 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 a good analogy there, brother. Truly embarrassed for this team. They had the game, but decided to be sloppy and passive. Although the Nets have better scores, is 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 not better than the Bulls. Well, that's the thing, though. It's about how you play the matchups. That's what sports is. Sports isn't this thing that uh, again, if you have superstar talent, maybe, but it's not this thing where people are like, well, you have better players here. They're better than these players. That means you're going to win the game. Coaching plays an aspect. The matchups play an aspect. The fact that the Nets got ridiculously. When you shoot the ball over 50% on high value for three-point range against a team that can't shoot three-pointers, you're going to win that game more times than not. I said it and I'll say it again. Drum and Caruso deserve better as much as I don't want them to go. Look, I, I can't disagree with you. I just hope that they want to be here. I'll take play and win, and I'll take the play and exit for the pick. Either way, it's a win. AK just can't f fell on the draft. That's what we need to talk about as well. Like, we can we can go younger. Like, they got to draft better. They have to draft better than what they've drafted. Don't get me wrong. Dalen has some potential as a bench player. Um, Julian Phillips has tons of potential. I would assume we see him, how he's rounding out. Patrick Williams has potential, but it's about Patrick Williams in between. Say, like, he has all the potential in the world, but – until he has the drive to want to max out on that potential, it don't matter, right? But you got to get some players that are in here and want it, bro. You got to get some players in here that want it. Chicago Bulls fans don't even try and give up uh, before trying to put pressure on ownership for an office. For an office making bad decisions, don't feel pressure because fans do nothing. The cycle keeps going. No, because it has nothing to do with you. You have to give pressure to you. We put pressure on it. And listen, we put pressure on the team. We put up a billboard. And it still took John Paxson to go to the to ownership and say, hey, I don't know how to do my job anymore. And then even then, ownership still said, all right, bet, Pax, you don't know how to do your job. AK, you're up. AK, we really want you to keep boiling on as the head coach. That's what pressure did. They could have signed Diva Chins or Harden signed two seasons ago and said, no, they couldn't have. Harden's, the money that Harden seen got offered, the Bulls didn't have, couldn't offer that and stay under the luxury tax. So, no, they couldn't have. Same thing with DiVincenzo. Do your research, brother. Like, And I don't mean that like an asshole. I just mean that plainly. The Bulls at that time, we a lot of us talked about the Bulls going after Isaiah Hardenstein. We didn't think the Knicks were going to offer that type of money. The contract that Hardenstein got offered, there's no way that the Bulls could have matched that. They couldn't have. Not, not with staying under the luxury tax. So...
Which ones, bro? Which ones? Tell me which which significant moves realistically Big Diesel that the Bulls could have made. Not some pie in the sky, taking into consideration the, the 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 salary, taking into consideration what it would have took to give them up, taking into consideration how we don't go into the luxury tax, and tell me what significant moves could the Bulls have done that were realistic. Tell me, and I guarantee you I can debunk them. Again, I know this salary capture. Like, this is what I do. This is my, the Bulls are my life. The Bulls and the Bears are my life, other than my kids. They're my life. Right. So when I tell you guys that things aren't really possible per the situation that this team is in, best believe it's because I reviewed every single scenario. I'm like the dude at the end of the Matrix. We we calculated everything. <laughs> hey, King, it's been a while. I've been crazy busy with this F1 race in Vegas. but We know our bulls are bipolar. This is nothing new. I've been on the Billy self uh, shit. Uh, I gave up this team. Sad, but true. Hey, I mean, I can't blame anybody who feels that way, bro. The question is, if we take Billy Donovan out of Chicago, who do you think we get back, Hayes? But that's not going to happen. What do you mean? Question, Hayes, if you were running the squad this offseason, would you restructure the squad similar to the Kings where you have vets and young players? Or do you? I mean, listen, every team is going to have vets or should have vets. No, I'm, and I know some people say, hey, eliminate all the vets. Get rid of DeMar, get rid of Vooch, get rid of Drummond, get rid of Alice Crew. That's not realistic. But you want, it's how much you pay those vets and what position they're in. For example, Drum and Alice Caruso are the type of vets you want on your team regardless of how young you go, right? You want those type of vets around. I would go so far as to say Tory Craig too. You want those type of vets around. But it's how you maximize and prioritize your young players to put them in a, in a position. Talk about putting up a B-board. Tell the fans, uh, then tell fans, as that is a good way to put pressure on the front office, the only way to put pressure. Air Force, nothing will work using that as an argument. No, it's just that it won't work. It's reality. You put up a billboard. That did nothing. It literally did nothing. Fan, I get it. Everybody feels empowered because you guys got social media. Guess what? I'm telling you right now, teams don't give a fuck. Until teams in turn, what we like to think that fans drive the teams making changes. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be 100 honest with you. Me having this podcast, me going, I, I can have a hundred thousand, all seventeen thousand of my subscribers go to hell off. Pat can have all thirty of his subscribers go to hell off. That shit don't matter. It doesn't. What drives franchises to really change is having a, a either owner or having a front office that is passionate about it. Uh, fans, I'm telling y'all right now, other than if everybody's going to have a mass exodus and never buy another Bulls ticket, maybe then, but here's what I'll tell you. The Bulls are such a worldwide phenomenon. We've already seen it. They're going to keep selling out. So again, bitching on social media, putting up billboards, that's not going to do shit. And most of y'all ain't spending money enough on the team to where you're going to stop spending money and it's going to work to do shit either. I'm just being real with that. Now, voice your opinion. I'm not saying shut the fuck up and go quietly into the night, but I'm trying to make y'all realistic. Y'all think y'all got more power than what y'all do. This ownership, Jerry Reinsdorf, don't give a fuck. I'm just letting, I'm just being real with y'all. He don't care. Bulls fan, I clearly, clearly the Bulls could have traded Zach Levine for Dame and DeMar for Joker. It worked in 2K. Yeah, that's the type of shit that you have, man. Oh. <sighs> If Acme filed the career-ending injury exception for Lonzo last year, they could have went after Jalen Brunson, and that's not a pie in the sky. That's legit. No, they couldn't have. Again, Jalen Brunson was signed and traded, and he was done, and he did that because of the money that they have. Lonzo Ball is on a $20 million contract. Even when you do file the career-ending injury exception, keep in mind, too, that Lonzo has to basically hand, hold his hand up and voluntarily uh, retire for that. It's not going to happen. So, no, that's not realistic, brother. And that wasn't last year. That was a year ago. And, again, keep in mind, at that point in time, there were still signs that Lonzo was going to be able to return. He didn't have the cartilage replacement surgery then. The career-ending ex injury exception would not have been approved because he didn't have what was looked at as a career-ending injury at the point in time that Jalen – I didn't even have to look that up, bro. You see how simple that was? The only reason where the career-ending injury exception became a thing is after Lonzo Ball had the cartilage replacement surgery because that's the type of surgery that players never never return from, that nobody's ever returned from that. The year that like, Jalen Brunson signed the offseason before that, come on, bro. You got, you, got to come, you got to come better than that. Like I told you, Bulls historian. I do this, brother. I do this. Didn't even have to look that up, man. 
Uh, would you look into keeping Javante Green for next season? Oh, absolutely. Because the way that I look at it is this. At this point, Javante Green isn't going to sign for more, much more than the than the veteran minimum, if even that, right? And so that's a player that, uh, yeah, you definitely look to keep on, in my opinion. I, I would definitely look to keep Javante Green on. Um, so, yeah. But before I go, hey, you see our boy Zach Eady on the final four? No, I mean, nobody ever denied that. See, that's the thing that you don't understand, Corn. Being a good player in college does not mean that you're a good player in the NBA. Do you still see where most mocks have Zach Eady not being drafted at all? Did you see that after the game that he played amazingly in? Kenny Smith said, hey, yeah, the only way that you draft Zach Eady is that if you want to commit to playing him 12 minutes a game and then you just want 12, six minutes in the first half, six minutes in the second half, and then you just commit to playing old school basketball for 12 minutes? Did you see that? Did you see that? If you're going to talk about, did you see things? Zach Eady's not a basketball player, bro. Not an NBA player. It's not going to happen for him, bro. You're talking about Zach getting Zach Eady as a first round pick. You're, you're crazy. You're crazy. Uh, no amount of money would make me want uh, to be in Acme shoes. Shit's crazy. So many moving parts to put in sync. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult, man. It's, it's difficult. Like I've said this before. I don't envy the position that Acme's in at all. I don't envy it. And it sucks, man. Drum had a bigger impact in the second half than Vooch. Completely agree with you there. No doubts. I completely agree with you there. No amount of money would make me want to be. Oh, I already read that one. Sydney says, I hope Acme went up to Ryan Poles after the Pacers game and been like, yo, man, can you teach me your ways on how you do my job? That I mean, football and 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 basketball have two very different salary cap structures. And it's really it's it's a lot easier to turn it around in football because of the number of positions that you have. Um, but I mean, listen, the mindset that that Ryan Poles has with just being aggressive and having a vision, it's it's just so great to have that, man. With the 12th overall pick in the 2024 NBA draft, the Chicago Bulls select another guard wing that could defend but can't shoot consistent threes. That's crazy. Uh, if they're going to draft another wing, at least get Terrence Shannon Jr., right? At least get Terrence Shannon Jr. Uh, Billy's rotation is Vooch eight to nine minutes, Vooch then uh, drum like seven to eight, seven minutes, and then Vooch to finish. That uh, does need to change and sub more often. I mean, this is the thing. There's going to be games where drum – he just can't stay on the court. There's absolutely going to be games of that. But the games in which Drum is playing well, let him play more minutes, bro. Now, there's going to be times as well where he asks to get out games because he can get gas, but it's just, it is what it is, man. My bad. I'm behind on the pod if I'm making repetitive comments. You're good, Rob. You're good there, brother. People can't handle their paychecks talking about how we can handle the salary cap. That's, that's hilarious, bro. But all right, any other questions, man? Sydney in the building. I think Acme is afraid to let his players go, and trust me, I don't want to be in his position, but his emotional connections are affecting the betterment of the team and their future. That's 100% true. And here's the thing. Have attachments to the young guys, right? Don't we, we don't want to let any more young guys go and develop elsewhere. But these aging veterans, man, come on, what are we doing? Uh, what would be the next step in the front office resigns tomorrow? Does that mean Zach will be 100% traded? I don't see that both of them will come back next season. Hey, Migs, here's what I'll say. Never say never when it's the Chicago Bulls and Acme's running the team. Don't do it. Doesn't really matter who the Bulls draft. In all honesty, whoever they select won't be seen until too late into the year, not until the next year. No, I disagree with that. When you look at when the Bulls have drafted high, a, a la Patrick Williams, they play right away, right? Dale and Terry... I get he was right outside the lottery. That's a bit surprising, but the Bulls would be adding a lottery player. And this is a draft where there are a lot of NBA. I, so I, I get the mindset everybody automatically goes to, well, they don't play rookies. Patrick Williams played right away. I would assume who played right away, right? So I, I think that it depends on where and what position they draft at. That's what I think. Bulls fans trying to start a Kobe, uh, a Cody Rhodes mo mo movement in the NBA. And that's crazy. Send Vooch to the Wizards. They don't want his ass. Peace, bro. Thank you for all you do. I appreciate you, Quentin. Appreciate you, brother.
But yeah, man, it's it's just it sucks where we are. I think everybody understands. It really does suck. We deserve so much better as Bulls fans, man. We deserve a lot better. And hopefully at some point we get it, man. I, I At some point it has to happen, right? We have to at least get lucky at some point, right? Uh, I'll play because of injury. Yeah, but guess what? He still earned the role, and he started that season playing. Yeah, it was an injury to Kobe. Had Kobe been healthy to start that season? Maybe not, but he increased his role. It doesn't matter. He increased his role, and then by the time everybody was playing, Iowa was still in the lineup. You have to have a skill that's ready. I see you also stopped trying to figure out deals since you said that it could have been a lot of deals that could have worked. I'm just saying, Big Diesel. I do this in real life, bro, in real life. The starting five and the closing five, same guys 99% of the time, often get us in big deficits and or lose leads. It's a pattern, not rocket science. Yeah, but I think most teams' starting five is probably close to their closing five as well most times. But um, Billy Donovan just got to stop being afraid to, to, to mix it up. He got to mix it up. Anthony Vargas says, I'm out. See you. I'll be watching your video posted tomorrow. I appreciate that, brother. We're Bulls fans. We should be used to being lied and cheated by our front office. That's crazy. We used up all our luck uh, winning the D-Rose lottery. I mean, I, there's something to that. Something to that. Something to that, man. Sucks, man. It sucks where we are right now as a fan base. I'm not even going to lie to you, man. This sucks. It, 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 like While I'm like, hey, it is what it is, make no mistake about it. This sucks. It really does suck. But listen, we got eight games left. Eight games. Let's get through these eight games, man. And whatever happens, happens. Luckily, regardless if they win, if they lose, everything, we're going to still be here at Chicago Bulls Central covering this God-forsaken team uh, with love and with passion uh, because that's what I do. I love the Bulls, man. This is my life. I love this team. But I wish it didn't hurt to love this team, right? I wish that, like, I'm ready to get to the point where the love does return. I really hope. I'm really ready to get there. I'm I'm ready to get to the point where the love has returned. At some point. Like, it sounds like being in an abusive relationship, right? Uh, the first half, when the Nets shot normal, uh, the Bulls actually looked decent energy-wise and had a decent amount of fast breaks, not shooting threes. True. Do you mean Acme will still run it back with Demar Alonzo and Vooch? Damn, Bulls need changes. It's definitely a possibility, bro. Um, not to be morbid, but I hope that Acme or whoever that fills in that role turns the team to the contending team before I die for real. Hey, I listen. I if I die before I get to see the Bulls win another title, I'm haunting all you motherfuckers. I'm just letting you know right there. You're gonna you're gonna be sleep, and all you're gonna hear is what postseason, bitch? Like in your ear. That's what you're gonna hear. That's what you what we doing, bro. That's what you're gonna hear. Your mama should have swallowed you. That's what you're gonna hear. That is y'all. I'm hunting all you motherfuckers. I'm just letting you know that right now. Why am I hunting y'all? Because I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm gonna do though. How would you rather be Ryan Polo's aggressive but not overspend or Acme who loves to have an eye for talent but doesn't spend big to invest when needed? He did spend big to invest when needed, though. That's why we're right up against the luxury tax. The issue with the Bulls is when teams start hitting threes, we try to match them knowing we don't have shooters. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Hayes, Acme dropped the ball by Trey. Yeah, I've said that 15 times. Come on, Diesel. Just admit you lost, bro. I know you like to talk. I know you like to type. But just admit it. it, it you, you, you didn't win the, the conversation, bro. You didn't win it, man. <laughs> Moral goes down once ops make all the threes. That's fact. Uh, man, I'm a diehard Bulls fan. I'm tired of this team being so inconsistent. I mean, no, they're consistently inconsistent. It's just frustrating. May as well play the kids. We're going to let the vets lose our lead and get annihilated. I just don't see the future uh, in that plan. Billy puts the closures in too early. The Bulls will win the championship after the feds get Diddy to come back to the U.S. Okay, I'm out for real now. And that. That is where we end the show. That's crazy. Uh, man, listen, I love you guys, man. And I hope that more so than anything, I know that the Bulls, and we can disagree, agree on what direction we want the Bulls to go on, but I think we all agree that we just want this team to win. And I think that's ultimately what it comes down to. I don't give a shit how they do it. I don't care. I don't care if they have to field a team full of people that look like my dog. As long as you start winning, 
That's it. Just win, man. Win. That's it. But hey, uh, but I love you guys, man. We're going to be back here tomorrow morning as we are every day. The only truly sh daily Chicago Bulls channel on all of YouTube and all of podcasting, man. Make sure you guys are following the channel at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullsCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. Um, and like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, y'all.